Listen carefully to exactly what I'm going to say before you take it out of context. Luke Rockhold is the most talented UFC fighter of all time. Not the best fighter of all time, the most talented fighter. And I'll explain why. And yes, there's other names. You could put Chris Weidman, Demetrius Johnson, and maybe Anderson Silva, because a lot of them were balanced fighters. They could do everything. They could do jujitsu, they could wrestle. Not as much to Anderson Silva, which is why I'm saying Luke Rockhold, because him and Chris Weidman never got knocked out. Well, they got knocked out. What am I saying? They never got submitted or lost a decision fight in their career, ever. It never happened. And they both did fight each other. And we did see Luke Rockhold win. But that's because, in my opinion, he is the better fighter, talent-wise, not career-wise. And maybe you could say he is, but that's up to you. You can say what you want about that. But I would put Luke Rockhold first, then Demetrius Johnson, then maybe a Chris Weidman, maybe, or an Anderson Silva. But I'm probably going to go with Chris Weidman because he has more attributes to his game than Silva did. Silva had just good movement and good jiu-jitsu. And I'm not saying he isn't skilled. Right, look at his record. Eight submission wins, six KOs and two decision wins. All-round balanced fighter, very elite submissions. Right. Look at the Chris Weidman win. He finished him by TKO, and this is when he was at his prime. Chris Weidman was at his peak right then, and he beat him by TKO. Next, Lita Machida. Finished him with a rear naked choke. Another good win. And look, it's not the way that he's just getting the submissions. Look what type of submissions there are. Look at the variety. Rear naked choke to Michael Bisping, another elite fighter, who then KO'd him as his chin got worse. Guillotine choke, and they're really hard to get off. To get a guillotine choke is hard. You've got to be really strong and lock in that grip because most people can power their way out of it. And this is where I say, this is where you see his technical ability. Look at when he fought Tim Bowich. He won by submission, inverted triangle Kimura. That's embarrassing. I don't know how you can even be put in that position and then tap to that. That's too embarrassing. Like, how do you let that happen? Another talented KO. KO by body kick. You never really see them in MMA. And I know these two aren't the best fighters, but it's the way he's doing it. That's talent. No one can just KO someone with a body kick. It's not that easy. We saw it with Kai Kara France and Brandon Moreno. Then again, we saw his weak chin again against Vita Belfort. Unanimous decision. He doesn't really lose decisions. Never has. TKO win, and this is the one that impressed me. He beat Ronald Souza, Jacare Souza, by unanimous decision. And right, if we look at his record here, right, let's have a look. Before he fought Luke Rockhold, it was a four fight winning streak. Luke Rockhold beats him by unanimous decision. Like how? And he's another person who is talented, but I wouldn't put him on the list because he wasn't really known for knocking people out. He was more of a submission person. Although he has got eight TKOs slash KOs, it's because he did fight for a long time. Like he started his career back in 2003. So he is gonna rack up some wins against journeymen. So yeah, he's got 26 wins, 14 submission wins. Right, let's go back to Luke Rockhold. Right, look at these wins. TKO, knees to the body. Another talented way to win. Submission, rear naked choke. Another one there, rear naked choke, rear naked choke. His punch power must be like top level because he's making fighters quit from his punches. A bit like Nunes against Pena in the first fight where she tapped out and it wasn't even locked in tight. It was like a neck crank. He makes people tap to punches. He's got an arm bar here. And I know people are gonna say he hasn't got much variety. He's just got a rear naked choke. Look at this, four fights in a row, he won by rear naked choke, four. I don't care who these opponents are, he won four in a row by submission. But now let's go to Chris Weidman's record because people are gonna say, you could say him. He's fallen off injury, freak injury again to Uriah Hall. Can't do anything about that, but yet again, look. Six KOs, four submissions, five decision wins, only lost by KO slash TKO. Same like Luke Rockhold. His chin is probably an issue now. It's never been submitted because he's very good at jujitsu and he can wrestle. One of the best wrestlers I've seen in a long time. Got KO'd by flying knee. No, we're not talking about all the KOs. We're talk about his wins. KO punch. Look, he beat Anderson Silva twice. The first one was lucky, I'm not gonna lie, because Anderson Silva was trolling, he was moving about, trying to entertain the crowd. That fight was lucky, I've gotta say. But in the second fight, again, TKO by leg injury, that's the most unfortunate thing to happen. Like, he beat Anderson Silva twice, but we're not talking about who's a greater fighter, we're just talking about who's the most talented. Damian Meyer, unanimous decision. Bravo choke, again, 
mixing up the variation. He got a guillotine, another hard submission to do, a Kimura. So we could see his jiu-jitsu was really good. He also TKO'd Uriah Hall in another promotion. Right, now let's move on to the next fighter, Anderson Silva. A lot of people would say he is the most technically skilled fighter, but I'm going to say no, he isn't. He's got good striking, he's got good submissions, but then again, he only got three submissions in his career. But his head movement was good. But look at the opponents Anderson Silva fought at one point. When he looked good using his head movement, it was against people who were nobodies. Chel Sonnen, yeah, that was an impressive win. Stefan Bonar, another impressive win. Knees to the body. He's a very technically good striker, but I'm talking about all-rounded. He hasn't got his wrestling. It's a bit like Khabib. He's got wrestling and semi-good jiu-jitsu, but he hasn't got the striking to make him the most talented. Vita Belfort, Frank Kick and Punches, another impressive win. Triangle armbar and Chelsea Sonnen. We all know about this. The luckiest win. Chelsea Sonnen dominating the fight. Tries to fight in his full guard. Gets caught in a triangle armbar. Taps. Doesn't accept he tapped. And he loses the fight. I wanted Chelsea to win that because he should have. He got really unlucky with that fight. Damian Meyer again, I think it was. I think he fought him twice. Yeah, Dan Henderson, Rene could choke, and he wasn't someone you could submit with ease. So he even fought John Jones at Submission Underground. Obviously, he lost. James Irving, KO. Rich Franklin, TKO. Nate Marquardt, TKO. He's kind of a journeyman. Rich Franklin beat him twice, KO by knees. Like, how do you not learn from that? You got kneed once. How does that happen twice? Like, come on, you should know that. Chris Lieben. Another semi-good fighter. He's all right. All of these fighters are obviously good, but I'm talking about the most talented. I have to keep repeating it because people will take it out of context. But you leave Murray in a different promotion. I'm not even going to talk about his career. Just type him in on Google. You'll know what I mean. You know what? I might have to change my mind and say Demetrius Johnson is. It's between them two. But then again, he has been KO'd and he has lost decisions. But he has fought top opponents. So it's hard to say who the most talented is, but it's between Luke Rockhold, in my opinion, and Demetrius Johnson. Look at that record, 30 and four, 12 submissions. Remember that flying arm bar he did? I'll never forget that. That is one of the most skilled submissions I've ever seen. It might be the most skilled. He's coming off a loss to Adriano Mores by knee. And that is because I'm not even gonna blame him for that because he's used to UFC rules. But in his rules, they're kind of allowed to do knees to a grounded opponent. Although I want that rule in the UFC, they can do it there. And he got caught and he just got unlucky. But his fighting style, he had an amazing fighting style. He had good striking, he could wrestle, he had good jiu-jitsu. His head movement was good, he had fast hands. Not too much power, but his fast hands and head movement, he could just outpoint his opponent with ease, which he did a lot of the time. Henry Cejudo, knees to the body. John Dodson, unanimous. Armbar, Kimura, Joseph Benavidez, KO, John Moraga, Armbar, Dominic Cruz, he obviously lost to unanimously. Rear naked choke. Like, look at key lock. What the? So he's got a key lock, he got an armbar, he got a rear naked choke. He could mix them all up, which is why I'm saying he is one of the most technical fighters in the UFC. Well, when he was in the UFC, he beat Rod Tang by rear naked choke, but then again, he's a Muay Thai fighter. So I'm not really gonna count on that. He's one of the best Muay Thai fighters out there. So who do you think is the most talented MMA fighter in UFC history? I think it's between either Demetrius Johnson or Luke Rockhold. Because Luke Rockhold, although yes, he's got a bad chin, he could do everything else. He had power, he could strike, he could do jujitsu. The issue with him was just his chin. And if he did have a good chin, I think he could have been the GOAT because he doesn't lose decisions. I just remember him using his movement, his wrestling, submissions. He'd use them so effectively. But then again, so would Demetrius Johnson. He could also do like karate kicks as well. He'd do like spinning kicks in the air and all sorts. But I've got to give it to Luke Rockhold. And when he fights Paulo Costa, it will be a guaranteed loss for Luke Rockhold. Paulo Costa's got power. Luke Rockhold's got a chin, a bad chin. It's inevitable that will get KO'd. I can just see first round KO. He's not lasting that first round. He's got way too much power. Look at the chin Vittori showed against Paulo Costa. If you really believe Luke Rockhold's chin's gonna hold up, you're delusional. It won't. It will be a definite KO for Paulo Costa. Luke Rockhold will then lose a third fight by KO. And I think he'll probably just retire because he knows his chin is weak. The CTE and brain damage that he will get from fighting will be too high 
and he'll be like, is it worth it to fight anymore? I don't think it is for him anymore. He started to fade. And it's not even a mental issue, it's just his body, his chin won't allow him to win fights. Imagine how good Luke Rockhold could have been if this chin wasn't an issue. He'd be so good. He's better than most of these fighters you see, like, talent-wise. Like, let me compare him to someone like Usman. He's more talented than Usman. Usman, he's a very good fighter, maybe pound for pound first. But it's the way he's, he swings recklessly, Usman swings. And he catches people like Colby. He was outboxing him in that fight. Just because he's not the best fighter doesn't mean he's not the most talented. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I believe Luke Rockhold was the most talented fighter we've seen in MMA. But unfortunately, his chin didn't hold up. So he won the title, obviously, but then lost it to Michael Bisping. And then after that, just things just went downhill. And now we're at today where he'll be fighting Paulo Costa, which will probably be a loss. I'm not going to lie. Talk to you soon.